John here guys and today we're talking about the Ishii Novice 2. This is the ready to fly pack that comes with everything you need to get it flying. It comes with your little small toothpick style quadcopter, a transmitter or controller or remote. Those all mean the same thing in this hobby and a tiny set of FPV goggles. Now the reason why I wanted to cover this is this is one of the beginner options that is popping up on the market. Um, and it has some good things and some not so good things about it. Now, the good things are this. The quad itself is actually very good. It has Ishin's new style of motor on here, a very nicely shaped motor bell that does look strong, it has a good amount of power. It has Ishin's um, all-in-one toothpick style power system, which is a flight controller and electronic speed controller all-in-one, has their um, diamond style video transmitter going to a Runcam Nano 2, which works perfectly fine. Comes with a couple of sets of these awesome 65 millimeter HQ props, which also work great. This kit comes with everything that you need in order to get flying. And that's the best thing about these kits by far. It comes with your antennas that you're gonna be using for the goggle. There's another one in here. It comes with a charger that you can use to charge up to six batteries at once. These goggles are very tiny. It's hard to tell from the pictures, but this is like what, I mean, it's really like child size. What is this? A center for ants? Almost, I mean, the screens are very small. Uh, just to give you a, an idea, these are the ones that come with the newbie drone um, beginner kit. Uh, look at the size difference there. Very much apparent. This is what you want for a fully immersive experience. And you can tell the difference in the size of the screen right there. So these will definitely get you started, but there are for a similar amount of money, um, some other possibly better options out there. This though is probably the worst thing about this combination. Um, it has like a little cell phone holder there, which means that this is really just a rebadge of a product that was probably meant for some other type of craft. These gimbals are very, very plastic and toy grade. Um, and a lot of the reviewers, when this came out a while back, noted that it has a dead band in there. Now, what does that mean? Uh, people kept saying that and it's very hard to get it across. Well, what it actually means, guys, is that there is full sensitivity at the bottom, there's full sensitivity at the top. Um, and the same thing with the side to side, but when you transition, there is a dead band or an area of no sensitivity in the middle. So what does that mean? Whenever I heard that, I thought, you know what? I can fly anything. I've been flying quads um, way before all the electronics and software had been improved to the level it is today. I can fly stuff that doesn't fly very well. It's not gonna bother me that much. I'll be fine. But what I didn't realize is that it's not just a hindrance or an inconvenience. It really does kind of mess you up because when you go from the bottom or from the left over, um, you're starting to move your stick at a certain speed, right? All of a sudden you get to the middle and it does nothing and it kind of freaks you out. So then you move it all the way to the other side and then all of a sudden you go from zero input to far input. So when you're trying to turn quickly, or when you're trying to turn slowly, actually was when it's more of a problem. When you're trying to turn slowly, you go from turning, 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 then it does nothing, right? So you're just floating. You get to the other side of the stick and it's like, boom, try to turn fast. And that quick, sharp, violent movement will kind of cause you to really almost fall out of the air. And the same thing happens when you're trying to throttle up You'll go from lightly trying to get more throttle to keep yourself from falling to all of a sudden you're starting to fall a little bit and then boom, throttle kicks in. So that could really make you hit something above you. And it's just golly. Uh, the kits come in about 129 bucks, which is not bad. Um, it's actually not that bad of a price for everything that you get. But really the best things about it are the quad, the batteries, the charger, that's fine. You're gonna have to replace this though. This is not good and 
you don't need something super professional to start out with, but I think this is gonna help you develop bad habits and that's what you don't want. And I also think it's gonna make people that have put the time in to learn how to fly still think that they can't fly well and they may get frustrated and quit, uh, which is what we don't want. We don't want people to just quit uh, whenever the issue is probably not their skill. It may just be that this radio is really not good. So I wish that they sell this um, separately because it's actually pretty good. This quad itself is easily worth about 90 to 100 bucks. So if you put it into those terms, well, you're getting the radio for 15 bucks, you're getting the goggles for 15 bucks. And for those type of prices, it's not that bad. The newbie drone style kit that I mentioned is gonna cost you more like 200 bucks. So if you really wanna dip your toe in, you can try, but you can't use this for simulator. You're gonna to wanna to upgrade this. So what the minimum that I suggest you do is if you did go with this kit, replace this right away with the beta FPV um, radio that's $40. That puts you in total of about $170, which is still slightly cheaper. And then you'll be good to go. Let's quickly go through the rest of the stuff. You have this longer carry strap. You can use a shoulder strap for the case itself. USB micro cable. That's what you use to connect your drone to your laptop or PC. The two antennas that are going to go onto the goggle. You have a full set of spare props. A little screwdriver to be able to remove motors and things, a couple of hex keys and a prop removal tool along with some extra screws. And you see this little plug right here. That is the dead plug you plug into one of the battery connectors. If you want to fly it with one battery, take the speed down just a little bit. Ishin is really good at creating these manuals, tells you step by step everything you need to know in order to get it started. Here's some footage where you can see me kind of falling out of the air. I've sprinkled those clips in. Uh, but here's the thing though, that is this radio. If I hook this up to my regular radio, it would fly like a dream because this is actually a really good combination, a good weight and a good amount of control. Uh, what do you think guys? Which beginner kit are you going with? I'm going to do a roundup and a competition of all of these different beginner kits to try to crown one as the best one to buy. So stay tuned, make sure and subscribe. We're going to cover all that soon. Thanks guys.